Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about designing a database correctly using what's called normalization rules. So let's consider a database that somebody built and they have a problem with it. Uh, do you see any problems here? So it looks like we're trying to keep track of the employees in our business. So far so good in the first few columns. We have their name and their sales office and the phone number. However, the database is supposed to keep track of the customers that they serve. And so they created a field called customer one, customer two, customer three. What would happen if your salesperson, God forbid, would have more than three customers? Then your database doesn't work anymore. It's designed wrong. So database normalization has three goals. First of all, we're trying to reduce redundancy in tables. So you should never have more than one copy of any piece of data. You're going to organize it so that it's easy to see and then also we're going to reduce errors or anomalies. So anomalies are where you have problems when you have inconsistent records. and That usually arises if you're keeping track of more than one copy of a piece of data. So for instance, if you are duplicating the name of a customer on different fields, you're going to have problems because you're going to have to keep track of more than one copy. Let's take a look at this database. For instance, we have a table called Employee Skills. So our boss is trying to figure out who knows how to use which program. And so Employee ID is the first field, and you can see that the last three lines here are a really talented employee. Number 854 knows how to use Excel, Access, and Photoshop. However, the database is not set up right because we have South Main Street listed three times as the address. So suppose employee number 854 decides to move and then we have uh, South Main Street listed uh, dozens of times in our database. It needs to be updated dozens of times. And so a bad design. This brings us to the first rule. We're going to call it the first normal form. So the rule here is that each table has a primary key and a minimal number of attributes in that table which can define a record. And so you cannot put more than one item inside a field. You can't separate items by commas. That's a bad design. And so that, that's what we would call an atomic piece of data. You don't split it. And uh, there's no repeating of groups either. So you don't have two columns that save, save the same information. <clears throat> Let's look at this example here of non-normalized data. So it looks to me like we have a class scheduling database and you can see that each student is taking multiple classes. And so the designer of the database just created a field called classes and each class is named with a comma separating it. Bad design. Here's another solution. So if the person says you can't put in classes by separating by commas, let's create three, uh, three fields. We'll call them class one, class two, and three. Not a good design either because students could take more than one class. So here's a little bit better design. So the class table has been separated from the students table and then we use a foreign key to tell the uh, one table where to find the student ID. So this kind of works, it's better. And so you'll get data that looks more like this. And so you can see that the classes are assigned for different students. So let's see, student 1000 is John Smith. You can see from the classes table that he has assigned to uh, course number 8 and course number 10. So math and chemistry. So that's a better way to design without having to duplicate data. Let's go on to the second rule here, or the second normal form. So we have to require everything in the first normal form, and then we try to do reduction of de redundant data across multiple rows. So uh, we will use foreign keys. Let's take a look at this example. Let's say we have an order system. So the orders table shows different parts that I want to buy. And so you can see in this segment of the table, I'm buying four different items, four different orders. So order number 522 comes from John Deere. So does order number 524, and so does I item number 525. And the um, name is repeated the supplier name, the supplier address is repeated, and the city. So something's wrong here. What we need is a separate table 
to separate the uh, suppliers. So if we were to separate suppliers from orders, we'd get something that looks like this. We have the uh, supplier ID listed in the orders table. And then looking up at the suppliers table in the bottom half here, we can see that there's only one copy of the name and one copy of the address for the suppliers. And so this is what the data would look like on the left, and on the right this is what the design would look like. Let's take a look at the third normal form. So this goes beyond the second. Uh, we need to eliminate fields that do not depend on the primary key. That is, any field that is dependent not only on the primary key, but also on another field, should be moved out to another table. So it's the extension here. The idea is that you'll probably be making more tables than you think you need. Let's say we have a uh, student scheduling system, and so the uh, students have an advisor, and so the advisor name, phone, and office are listed inside of the uh, student's table. It's a bad design. Instead, we should take the advisor and create his ID number in the student, and then outside of there, we can have the uh, advisor name in his own table. Let's look at the uh, class scheduler again. So a while ago, we just uh, decided we were going to separate classes from students. However, in your design, you would probably come across the idea to say, we probably have more than one section of math, and uh, we need to create another table. And so let's create a different design here. This is what it would look like if it were... This looks more correct now to me. So the students are linked to sections, and so each section number is associated with a class title. So your design is going to involve splitting up things into smaller and smaller segments. However, you look at the section and you find out that in the section you put in a teacher name. Well, we don't want to duplicate teachers' names either. So it's going to extend to yet another table. And so now we'll create a teacher's table. And so we can put all of the data associated with one teacher inside of that table, and then you uh, do a foreign key link up to the sections. So the teacher's ID is in the section, but it links to the table where we get all of the teacher's data. It's not complete even yet, because look at the teacher's table. The teacher works in a certain college. So at a university, there might be more, more than one college. At the university, you might have a college of science, a college of arts, a college of business, a college of education. And so if your teacher is in the College of Education, then we should probably have a, an ID number for the education college and the details about who the department head is and where the building is located. And so we're going to yet add another table. So the uh, scheduling system is going to grow to 10, 20 tables. Who knows how many? Depends on how many details we have to keep track of. But the idea is you're supposed to split up data so that you don't duplicate it. So we've looked at some examples of database normalization. We want to decrease redundancy, so that means no repeating of names. We want to increase in efficiency, reduce anomalies, so there's no data collisions or data inconsistencies. And uh, usually these first three rules are enough to be able to uh, make your database work properly. There are more rules, but these are the three that will probably keep you out of trouble.